Alright, this is my first real life tutorial, and what better way to start off than making an LED flash on and off with an 18F Pic Micro. Designed for the complete beginner, I'm going to run through a bunch of components and development tools. I'll start off with my 9 volt battery. Uh, this is just a standard battery and a battery connector to allow me to interface it with my breadboard. And the end of the wire is tinned so that I can simply insert it, and it's nice and sturdy. And yeah, so tinning just means that I've got a little bit of solder on the uh, on the core of the wire. My 5 volt regulator, this ensures that I have a stable voltage for my PIC Micro. And here I've got two 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. Uh, they're polarized. Notice on one side there's a band. This band has negative marks or minus marks. So that leg will be the negative pin. And the other side is unmarked. My PIC Micro, in some cases, needs a, an external oscillator to run. Some PICs have internal oscillators, but here I'm using 20 MHz oscillators and they can look like either one of these packages. In fact, they don't really vary from size to size, it's just this is one type of package and this is another type of package and you can get a range of oscillators in either, in either type. Next is these two capacitors, they're ceramic disc type, they're rated for 22 picofarad. They're used to load up the crystal oscillator to ensure it runs accurately and correctly. There's a list in the PIC Micro data sheet that will give a range of different oscillator speeds and different capacitance values. Next is the uh, tantalium capacitor. These are polarized and there's a small plus on one side that indicates that the, that lead is the positive lead. These are to used to remove transients in, on the breadboards or in any circuit. Transients are small signals, spikes, uh, interference that sit on uh, DC levels and this capacitor will remove them and just short them straight to earth. And of course my PIC Micro. Here I'm using an 18 f 452. It's a 40 pin dip package and that's why dip means it's got these leads on it and SOIC is surface mount and my 10k uh, resistor is for the memory clear pin to connect it to 5 volts and here I've got my LED and a 470 ohm resistor this resistor is to make sure that the LED isn't overdriven the bread and butter of, of any hobby, is, hobby electronics is the breadboard as you can see I can, can connect my IC press it down nice and firm so that it sits flush and it feels like it's in place nice and secure and each of these rows coming out are all shorted together but they're isolated between each other so from this pin here I can, 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 can uh, interface with it from any one of the three adjacent uh, spots these ones down the side are a power bus if I just use this lead as an example I won't be connecting 9 volts till later, I'll be connecting 5 but this power bus allows one whole row, or, sorry one whole column to be connected and the uh, other, other column to be connected so they're very handy for just having one reference to be able to just go straight over and connect it to your, your power source to program my PIC Micro I'm using the Picket 2 and it's like 34 or 35 bucks from Microchip this arrow indicates uh, like the, the first uh, pin connection and as you can see there's six here I've gone to the liberty of making a little adapter cable so that I can use it in my breadboards one is for memory clear and that's a one on the far right there indicating the green is for the uh, to, to be connected to the arrow and then each other one is identified and so forth I'll go into more depth on the big micro later on on the data sheet but I can just plug it in like that and on my breadboard I can just go to the pins they're already in a known location for a 40 pin big micro so I can program it straight up and with that I can program any pick micro that's in a dip package and the other bit of bread and butter for the uh, for development is wire a handy hint go out and grab some cat5 cable it's really cheap but make sure you get solid core that means that the copper inside this insulation is one single core and not multi strand so now it's nice and sturdy I can go from use it on, on my breadboards and not worry about the wires playing out and tinning the wire and look how much you get, you just buy a meter and you'd be set for a long time
wire cutters and an IC remover. Very handy because if you press these down nice and firm so they sit properly in the little clasps that hold the, hold the legs, they're very hard to get out. With this, seat it so that there's an edge under each side. Holding the breadboard, nice firm upward pressure and I've taken it out with no damage to any of the pins and I, I reckon you'd be hard pressed trying to get that out by hand without bending one whole end all the pins would be facing in one direction okay so I've just followed the links, I've downloaded Swordfish, I've installed it and I'm now playing around with the software itself this button here is the new button, it creates a new document so I've created a new document and I've saved it, I, I just saved most of my things in the bin directory that I'm not going to use too often later on and then when I'm happy with it I'll put it into my own personal directory okay so the, to start off with Swordfish is structured in the way that you have to declare your device first and then your frequency of the pick micro if I was, and this is already in a megahertz range so if I was using a 4 megahertz crystal it'd be 4 or if I was using the internal 8 megahertz oscillator on some picks it'd be 8 and with PLL, well, I'll leave that and do it in another tutorial. Okay, so the DIM allows me to, to declare variables and and aliases. So in this case, we've an alias of LED. And wherever the, the software finds LED, it's going to replace it with port B pin 0. So from here, I can start writing my program. And to start off with, I've used a while condition. So while true, this is an infinite loop. It's like writing while one equals one. It'll never, never actually leave this loop and just keep cycling. The moment it gets to the wind, it'll come back up. Okay, so the next line of code would be high LED. Uh, bonus of using BASIC is that it allows you to use mnemonics that sound like, that do what they sound like. So in this case, high bracket LED, it's actually going to make that pin and output and set, and set it high. I'm then going to delay for 500 milliseconds and then make the LED pin low so it's going to flash on and off and then delay for another 500 milliseconds so this whole loop will take one second to complete and it's just going to keep looping infinitely right, from here I'm going to compile the program that's what these two little icons are, look like a refresh symbol and you can go to a couple of different options but just hitting that will compile it for you. Going to my Picket 2 software, I'm going to import the hex and find the uh, program. It says uh, hex file not loaded because it can't actually find the device. So what I'm going to do is plug in my pick my uh, Picket 2 and and I've already got it connected to my pick on the breadboard with the required pins hooked up and I'm going to go to tools check communication so now it's found the picket 2 pick device found so I'll re-import the hex after you've located the directory that your file was in you'll notice that a uh, the same file name but a .hex format will be shown in the uh, folder this is only here after you've compiled your project and it's a machine code that that uh, Swordfish has produced for the PIC Micro to perform the duties that you required it to do in your software. So if you do make a change in your program, make sure you recompile it and load the hex file again. Click open to import it into Picket 2 and then write to the device. Well, that was pretty quick, it's already done and now my pick micro is programmed it has the uh, whole swordfish program loaded onto it and it should do exactly as it's told just flash on and off and this whole loop will take one second this is the ADNF452 data sheet I just downloaded it from link on my site and you can also get it from the microchip site uh, a good way to browse around is to use the uh, the bookmarks as you can see it's listed all the way through all the different features and I'm going to go straight to the uh, pin diagrams and I think it's on the next page you'll find the package that I'm using so I'll just make this a little larger 
as you can see pin 1 is memory clear and going to the next pin of interest would be 11 which would be VDD which would be a positive power supply just note on the 40 pin picks there are actually two power supply pins on either side and going down on pin 12 is your negative which is VSS and oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 these are the two pins that your uh, external oscillator connect to so if I keep going down pin 20 21 is then on the lower right going up to the negative power supply again VSS and 32 VDD for programming I generally haven't had an issue to date with just connecting these two going up further and here are your programming pins PGD and PGC so you, this is what I'd use with my little adapter I made and just identifying which one's PGD which would be pin 40 and just putting that into the breadboard and PGC same from there you pick it to be able to identify what pick micro is connected if you've got power and memory clear as well and you can just simply up download your, uh, your your program onto the pick okay so I just wanted to show you in real life what happened when I program my pick micro so I just unplug my picket 2 as you can see I've got five connections memory clear PGD PGC positive and negative I uh, just showed you how to, how to identify these from the data sheet and these little connectors are very similar to the 5-pin uh, one on the front here that I just snapped off a 40 row they're just single connectors wires soldered on the top a little bit of hot glue just to make it a bit more sturdy and now with that pin I can plug into anywhere I want on the breadboard and whether it be 18 pin 28 or 40 pin pick micros I can put it in my breadboard and program it I'm making sure that number one lines up with the arrow because that's memory clear and now I'm going to go to my software and program the pick micro and it's done so that's how, how easy it is to program your pick Okay, so now I'm going to cover how to identify what pins are what on the on the power supply or the voltage regulator. So I'm using the 7805 and I've just downloaded it from the link on my site. If I go down to page 2, it has a picture of the of the package I'm using, the TO20. And this flange on the back, or this this is actually metallic, you, you can attach a heat sink onto it. But this is actually with the device laying down and the uh, the square package is risen like facing towards the, the top so with it in that uh, within that respect the uppermost pin will be output middle will be ground and lower will be input with that in mind uh, you can see on page one the fixed output regulator this is just the basic circuit on how to use this device as a regulator so the input which would be my nine volts will go into my uh, into that lead the ground and the output and here are my two capacitors but in my case I'm using 10 microfarad for the nature of the circuit I'll also briefly describe how I selected the 22 picofarad capacitors I've just gone to bookmarks gone down to oscillator configurations and so it's the information starts about the different oscillators different speeds Scroll your, way, scroll your way through till you find a uh, capacitor selection for crystal oscillator and just find the frequency that you're using and find something similar so in this case I'm using exactly 20 megahertz and it's listed here and it says to use a 15 to 33 picofarad uh, in, in practice I've used a 22 picofarad for every speed between 4 megahertz to 20 megahertz and I haven't had any issues to date with using those speed capacitor, or sorry, that load capacitor. This is the wiring diagram for the circuit itself. Keep in mind, though, with my software and in all of my video tutorials using this software, there's no power pins on the pick micros. Uh, that's purely because the software just assumes that they're connected correctly. And just remember that 5 volts goes to both VDD lines and you connect both VSS lines to earth so going back up to the battery which is this 9 volts here this would be the red lead and it'd be connected to the voltage regulator and this capacitor the 10 microfarad capacitor and the black lead would uh, share the same common earth bus one of the power rails 
Okay, so this would be 9 volts coming in, and this would be a stable 5 volts coming out. And this capacitor will help maintain that even further as uh, as the load switches or the certain requirements of the circuit change. This capacitor will help uh, maintain those those changes and keep stability. It goes through a 10k resistor, which goes straight through to pin one. Without 5 volts at MCLR, you will the pick will not uh, start as such. It will remain in a reset state, so it needs needs a uh, a high signal to actually enable it to begin incrementing the uh, instruction clock. My oscillator is connected between pins 13 and 14 and on either side of it I've got these 22 picofarad loading capacitors and they are both connected to the earth on the other end. These aren't polarized, doesn't matter which way they go in but these are polarized. This uh, line section indicates the negative or the minus on the side of the uh, capacitor. Port, P, port B, pin 0, is the output for my LED and it's running straight up to this 470 ohm resistor and then to the green LED which is connected to earth. Uh, the LED itself, it'll be round and there'll be a plastic flange around the, uh, the bottom part of it. Now one side of that flange will be flat. Directly below that flange, that flat part will be the, the negative lead or the cathode so that'll be the lead that you'd connect to earth and that's the line there on any LED diagram diode the actual line that the arrow points to is the cathode okay so with that out of the way I'll just simulate the circuit with the program already loaded on there just to show you what it's going to look like and you can see it flashes once every second okay so I've assembled the majority of the circuit as you can see I've got my single core wire uh, connecting everything up. This is my voltage regulator and using the pin output I showed you earlier I've got the input, the ground and the output all wired accordingly. Uh, one, one thing about these power rails I didn't mention earlier is that the power rail on these boards go from one half to the next half like that. They're actually isolated in the middle. There's a larger gap here. There's no electric continu continuity between each rail over to the other side. And yeah, so I did have an issue with this one. I had this earth wire over here. It didn't work. Fault found it to be the, uh, that was the issue. Alright, so, the memory clear is just a 10k resistor going to 5 volts. I've got my oscillator wired up, just like in the wiring diagram you can find on my site. And I've got my power rails, or my power pins, connected to the other ones, which connect to 5 volts and earth. So everything is set up and ready to go. Port B pin 0 is the output of that resistor. And just before I test it out, I just want to show you quickly an easy way to uh, take the insulation off this copper wire. Using a Stanley knife and not cutting yourself, just score the wire around the outside and you can just pull it off. And there you have, a, uh, you have the copper exposed and it's nice and clean and you're not going to wear off your teeth. Okay, so I'll plug in the battery and there we go, it's flashing on and off. And this cycle takes one second for every flash. Now if it doesn't work, as I said earlier, uh, you can fault find a couple of different things. Check the power first. Make sure you've got 5 volts on your pick micro across the uh, positive and negative pins on your pick. If you don't, go to your half split, your voltage regulator, make sure that you got power from your battery coming in. Now if, if there's less than 7 volts on the, on the power, on the input, sorry, then the re regulator won't be able to supply 5 volts. It's going to work hard but it can't get there and your pick micro is going to have, uh, have not, not going to have enough voltage. Other things to consider, your oscillator. If your oscillator wasn't sitting correctly, nothing would happen because the pick micro wouldn't know when to execute the next cycle. So make sure that your oscillator is seated correctly and that your uh, capacitors and everything else are, are, are seated as well. Some other things, or well, one other point really to add is that to increase stability and timing sensitivity of the pick micro, you can use a 0.1 microfarad tantalium capacitor 
these are polarized and there's a very small positive symbol on one side and basically you want to put that as close as you can to the power pins so I'm just going to run it between positive and negative and now that will remove all transients that the uh, breadboard is creating that are running straight over to the uh, end of the PIC micro why are they transients? because these rails here between pins act as small capacitors and as things are switching on and off an oscillator going over here you're going to get little signals around the breadboard so that's just one thing to consider and it's good practice to put it in with every circuit alright thanks for listening I hope this helps someone out any other questions have a look through the tutorial you can find where to get all the parts and things like that and yeah have fun with pick micros